Sound advice to keep your body and mind in perfect harmony. You're tuned in to the Dr. Stephen Show. Now, here is Dr. Steven Eisenberg. hey oh, Hey there. This is Dr. Steven Eisenberg, and this is the Dr. Steven Show. What we're doing is a unique platform that gives you the opportunity to laugh, learn, and listen to the brightest minds shaping health and happiness today. And this, this is my city, and the city of my guest today, New. We'll find out about that in a second. I believe the wise prophet Ron Burgundy once said, Ah, San Diego, drink it in. Speaking of drinking, did you have your protein shake today? Eggnog, it is the holidays. Red wine? Let's go with protein shake, shall we? Protein shakes can work well for some, but they also have the potential to add a lot of unwanted calories to your diet if it's packed with sugar. My guest calls some of these protein shakes milkshakes. If you're an athlete, you may be doing more harm than good if you're already eating tons of protein and then eating tons of shakes on top of it. So make sure you consult with a doctor or a nutrition expert like our guest today for the proper amount of protein for you. So let me tell you about a protein shake recommendation that works well for just about everybody, and it hit the market like 10,000 years ago. It's called milk. Sound familiar to all of you out there in internet land? That's right. While your neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Fancy Pants, are drinking expensive protein shakes like, Buffy, my dear, please pass me my ultra-filtered, mega-pure, isolated, hydrolyzed, super awesome whey shake. Try downing a glass of milk, even if it's chocolate. No processed or chemically engineered drink can come close to the perfectly nutrient-balanced glass of milk from Mother Nature. It's one of the easiest ways to get the calcium and vitamin D that you need. And vitamin D is super, super deficient nowadays. Every patient I see is basically vitamin D deficient. Don't forget to get your levels checked. Do it for me, if no one else. And finally, today's guest is JJ Virgin, a world-renowned nutrition and fitness expert. I like to call her the goddess of nutrition. We're going to peel the layer on healthy diets and get to some winning strategies that will help all of you conquer not only the holiday eating season, but also a diet that works for your lifestyle. So if you've got the stomach for it, you'll get to watch JJ check out the percentage of my belly fat with her calipers, for heaven's sake. We'll see if I need a new diet. I probably do. So brace yourselves. This is The Dr. Steven Show. Because you need to know. Because you need to learn. Because financial planning can be complicated. There's WealthEd.com. WealthEd.com. The site dedicated to educating you about financial planning. With guidance from experienced financial planners. Helping you learn more about creating your financial plan. Watch Bucket Strategy Investing, presented by Lucia Capital Group, every day at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Or watch archived features from the show on demand. Learn more about options for your benefits on the Social Security Show every Tuesday afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Lucia Capital Group brings you Bucket Strategy Live, Wednesday evenings at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. And learn more about the challenges women deal with on Fem Finance, Thursday afternoons at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. It's the site where understanding financial planning can start to click. Click on WealthEd.com. Live programs, on-demand archived features and articles. Go to WealthEd.com. WealthEd.com. There's a lot of good for milk. Here. Welcome back. To the Dr. Stephen Show, I'd like to introduce my amazing, amazing guest today, J.J. Virgin, author of the New York Times bestseller, The Virgin Diet, and other New York Times bestsellers like The Sugar Impact Diet. Um, J.J., thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're so welcome. I just came by because I wanted to argue with you about milk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought that might have uh, triggered something for, for a lot of our friends out there. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Um, tell, me, tell me more about milk. Yes. You're like, well, uh, so I must disagree with you about this. The premise of the virgin diet is that food intolerance is the real cause of weight gain and the inability to lose weight and that there's certain foods that we eat that can create inflammation, cravings, etc. And one of the biggest ones is dairy. In fact, dairy like sugar and gluten is a drug. 
And I believe like cereal and milk is our, is our trifecta drug of choice because mm -hmm. they all have an opiate-like effect on the brain. Um, gosh, just in the U.S., 25%, but overall 75% of the, the world are lactose intolerant. Yeah. But dairy also raises insulin, and insulin, as you know, is a it, it helps us build, but it can also help us build fat. So I'm not so much a fan of milk besides milk is high in sugar. Yeah. And yes, you could say it's natural, but your body doesn't know, th I mean, they're all natural. Yeah. Come down, or th otherwise they're artificial. So I'm not so much a fan of milk, I must say. What about alternatives like um, almond I'm milk? I'm a big fan of those. And that's really how I built the Virgin Diet. I built it on a series of swaps. And so, so many people are like, okay, have a glass of milk. And it's interesting because you brought up the, um, Calcium, well, it's very acidifying, so it actually makes it even harder for your body to absorb it because it can leach the calcium out of your bones versus almond milk, which is higher in calcium and it's not going to have that impact. So I'm all about looking for simple swaps so if someone's listening, because I know they go, I, I can't give up my dairy. Usually it's not so much the milk, it's the cheese. Yeah. Right. So cheese. Right. Yeah. Is cheese okay? But, you weep, know, my weep, kids weep. eat like cheese sticks. <laughs> like they're going out of style. Well, you know what? There's almond cheese, and you can actually make cashew cheese at home. It's super fun. You can make cashew cream, cashew cream cheese, regular cashew cheese. It's amazing. Hmm. So you can do all sorts of stuff with nuts instead of uh, milk. There's almond milk. There you go. Cashew yeah. milk, flaxseed milk, rice milk. I personally, my favorites are almond milk, coconut milk. Coconut ah. milk by far, because the fats in coconut, the MCTs, are an easy to burn fuel source for the body. Yes, so. and I've even seen coconut chips. I bought some the well, other see, day. Well, see, you know, it, it's it, to me, I call that food porn. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it, you know, <laughs> it's just like when we went gluten-free and I had clients come to me and they go, oh, I found these great gluten-free cookies or cupcakes. I go, but you weren't eating cookies and cupcakes before. Don't start now. So it's interesting because <laughs> you find out something's a health food, right? Like right. coconut is an amazing health food. And for so many years, we believed it to be problematic because it's saturated fat. But we now know that actually in countries where they eat a lot of coconut, they have lower risk of heart disease because of the antiviral impact of the monolaurin in coconut. Mm. So coconut's amazing for us. But then you take it and go, okay, now I'm going to dry the coconut. I'm going to add some sugar and I'm going to make it a coconut chip. Mm. Just like the kale chips in the supermarket. Yes. If you make kale chips at home, oh my gosh, they are A, inexpensive, B, delicious, easy to make, even the kids can make them. You get them from the grocery store and all of a sudden something that is a very low calorie, nutrient dense food becomes a high calorie junk food because mm -hmm. they throw in all this extra stuff. I mean, I've even seen chocolate chip kale chips at the grocery store. Wait, so food porn is about taking something healthy and Making then a good thing bad. putting yes. some sugar on it, sprinkling it with a little magic, so Yes, to so speak. that people will want to eat it, ah. right? Ah. Mm. Well, maybe, my, maybe my, my fascination with milk has, has led to some of, some of this. Well, well think about Have it. You, you know, babies, babies nurse because milk has growth factors that help us grow. Yeah. Do you need to still be growing? <laughs> uh, in certain I will ways, see, won't we? Because we're going to see that belly. I think uh, that'll keep people staying tuned. Will you please measure my um, <laughs> fat levels? Do you mind? I've got so I've got two things here. Yes. Oh my God. And let's just explain what this is. Because these are body fat calipers, Dan and Dan what Dan you do. It, what I like to tell people is this: not what you weigh. Weight matters, but it's really what that weight is made up of. And so there's actually a phenomenon called TOFI, thin outside, fat inside, for people who try to maintain their weight through diet alone, mm -hmm. who are have not enough muscle. Their weight's fine, but what it's made up of is they have high body fat, low muscle mass. So what you want to make sure of, was that you? <laughs> <laughs> is that as you're losing weight, you're actually losing fat but holding on to or building muscle. And that's why there's, there's a couple key things that you want to have at home. And one of them is the tape measure, the single real biggest indicator of if you're doing better. Because when you're losing weight, if you're not losing your waist, you're making yourself worse, not better, is to just use a tape measure. Hmm. I mean, this is just a great deal. And so measure me. for, I'm going to, stand up, come okay. here. Okay. Bring it on over here. Might have to All unbutton right. that jacket, too, uh, there. I'm going to unbutton I'm this. I'm going in. And what do I, um, do I stand up? I got to get, yeah, you got to get, you're all tangled up there. Okay, I'm good. All right. All right. So, Stand up. So uh, when you're going to do a waist measurement, what you okay. want to do is you want to do your waist right around the belly button. So okay. I got that. I'm, I'm sucking right it in. He's saying, and so what I do, Look because at me. I know this trick. 
let's just be normal. Let's okay, try, okay. try, try. Uh, I don't know if you can be normal, but my my, you know. my kids make fun of me. Hold on, I gotta put me. my naughty librarian glasses on here. <laughs> All right. You want me to there, hold this or something? Okay. So stop. Just okay. let, relax, relax. Oh God. Okay. So for men, no, don't relax that much, please. Okay. You know, then I can't unsee <laughs> this. There's some things we can't unsee. <laughs> so right around here, you're gonna measure right around the waist, right around uh -huh. the um. Jacket off so the people belly button. Won't. It's okay, but now here's the important thing, just for everybody at home. See where his belt is. Now the challenge is, is that people will look at this, stop it, Ugh. and they will think when they see this that they will think that you know you go, oh well, I have a a 34 inch waist. No, that's your belt. What's this over here? This is your waist. This thing hanging over your belt. That's it's it. It's my fab. Okay. So fat right above now, belt. Yeah, fat above belt. Fab. Is, by the way, I'm fab. this is this is like this. Is, you're a doctor. This is not acceptable for you, by the way. Your oh 37 God. inch waist. A 37 inch waist. Now, oh my 40 Lord. is like 40 is big, like ah, alarm bells. But really, come on. How tall are you? Around six one. Yeah. So I mean, we like 34 should be your like. That's it. That's mm. it, Dr. Steven. Oh my God. Now that's one way to look at it. For women, 35 inches is really sound the alarm, but that's, when we get to sound the alarms, it's, you know, really scary. But you want to be doing this as weighing and measuring. And by the okay. way, the studies now show that when you're weighing every day, the people who do that are more compliant on their program, but also don't get into the weight regain mode. Because mm -hmm. the worst thing I see out there is not challenges losing weight, it's people regaining and then giving up, mm -hmm. right? Especially yeah. during the holidays, they just like go off the rails. I also, I know she sat back down. Were you scared? I, I'm very scared. Be, be afraid, be, be afraid, very be afraid. afraid. So. Okay. Besides just looking at your weight, we're also looking at what your weight is made up of. So one of okay. the things is we want to see if your your fat your fat placement. So we did that by tape measure, right? But mm -hmm. we also can do it by body fat. Now there's simple body fat scales that you can use, yeah. right? Like a Tanita scale, and these are great and inexpensive. You can get one for a hundred bucks. Nice. But you can also have someone have a trained professional do this that for would be you. you. Yes, yeah, stand up. Now these are called calipers. This is a body fat caliper, a skin fold caliper. Oh up, God. stand up, stand up. Oh Lord, and, have um, mercy. And I'm actually, what I'm doing is I'm doing it right near, and I'm going to take off your shirt so I oh know wait, how much. Oh wait, hold on. Look away. Look yeah. away. They won't be able the to look away. The paleness will blind you. It's the paleness, and what is that? How, now this that's, is, by that's the way. My, you know what that is? That's eating my kids' leftover chicken nuggets. They well, leave why, them. Why are your kids eating chicken nuggets is the bigger question. Do you not like your kids? Well, well okay, um, corn nuggets. Um, leftover corn nuggets, you know those ones made out of mushrooms? Is that okay, they have regular chicken nuggets too. Why don't you just give them chicken? Is there something I don't know about? Is there a, <laughs> is a chicken ban at your so house? Is that, okay. Is that bad? And maybe we don't have to give them chicken that's been fried and breaded. And then we're going to take a little chest here. Now this, okay, I'm taking your shirt out. Okay. So this is in between there and there. I'm just okay. there. Uh -oh. oh. Did that hurt a little bit? Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, all right, we're good. I, I was just thoroughly... Um, measured. That's okay. Measured. <laughs> I'm doing this for the betterment of humanity. And how old are you? I am 45. So, and uh, you're 45. And do you have any any guess as to what your body fat is? Oh my God. Um, well, now that I'm now that I'm with you, I'm I'm thinking it's like way up. So, so I guess really seven percent. <laughs> so for men, for men, she the high point. She me like, are you kidding me? Are you me? kidding? Um, men have 2 to 3% essential fat, fat they must have to survive. You'll see athletic men will be anywhere from 5 to 15%, really 5 to 12%. And you really don't want to go over, say, 18%. Um, you start getting into the risk for metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, diabetes. You get mm -hmm. over 24, 25%. You start getting into the obesity range. And you, my friend, are 26%. That is unacceptable. What the 26%. heck? So I know we're going to talk some today, and you're going to make a promise to me that you're going to take at least one of the things that I say today and start it immediately. And then so we can only focus on one thing at a time. Once we get through that, we'll go to the next and to the next and to the next. Okay. So can I show you something that will help you stay on the st straight and narrow during the uh, holiday season? Yes, please. Because this is probably not the time most people decide they better go on their program. Mm -hmm. But you can do it and you need to start right now, right? Yeah. So 26%. this is a journal. 
go in search of life's possibilities. Well, that, that doesn't matter, okay. but this okay. is a journal. Yes. Now, the studies show that people who write down what they eat every single day actually mm -hmm. lose more weight, twice as much weight as, as people who don't. What you measure, wow. you can improve. Now, what you measure and you report on, you improve exponentially. So not only do I want you to be reporting this down and doing a weigh and measure and weighing every day, I think you should be reporting it into your viewers as well so that they hold you accountable. Maybe some of them will even do it with you. Did you hear that, viewers? I am going to be giving you my weight and what I eat every week, thanks to mm -hmm. you, JJ. There you go, because they can hold you accountable. Because again, what you measure, you can improve when you report it improves exponentially hugely important so this is just a little secret because you think twice when you have to write it down and then mm. if you have to show other people my gosh right yeah okay I love this there's an easy I one and this. doesn't cost anything either um, when we get back we're going to talk about the virgin diet which is your New York Times bestseller and we're going to get into some more holiday do's and don'ts yes so Come back. We'll be right back with JJ Virgin, everybody. That was great. It's the site where understanding investing starts to click. Click on WealthEd.com, educating you about financial planning and answering your most important questions with live interactive shows hosted by experienced financial strategists and an on-demand library of videos and articles you can access anytime for free. WealthEd.com brings you retirement planning guidance, social security strategies, tax management techniques, portfolio allocation options, and more. Your source for information and financial education. Online, on demand, on WealthEd.com. back with the wonderful JJ Virgin who has um, given me a new possibility on life uh, <laughs> it's called accountability it's called journaling and I get into trouble around the holidays mm -hmm. uh, it's more than just yeah, eating I, my I don't kids. really think you're alone <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so um, suppose someone suppose someone's watching this right mm -hmm. now and they're about to go to a holiday party later mm -hmm. tonight mm -hmm. and they look at that tray um, is there a trick that they could do or are there parties tomorrow what could they do today or later today to help prevent overeating at this at this event that they're going to so there are so many different things we can do to get through the holidays and actually get through the holidays so January 1 we're not making that resolution again <laughs> right you know weight the loss is not year? a hobby it's not a hobby this is it because this is about making simple shifts and then they just become the way that you live so all these things I'm going to say for the holidays are really things we could do at any point yes. but one of the things that I see that people do that really sets them up to fail is they go to a holiday party hungry mm. Have you ever done that? Yeah. Yes. 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 Like yes. not eat the whole day. Right. Save up. <laughs> Save up. Yes. <laughs> so that you're just completely out of control by the time you get there. You actually do not want to do that. You want to make sure that you eat your normal meals, right? And don't go in hungry. So if you're going to a party that starts at 7, make sure that you have like your, your lunch around 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock of good healthy protein, healthy fats and fiber. That's the real trifecta for blood sugar balance. Have a little snack in the afternoon, maybe some turkey with some avocado because mm -hmm. that's some great fiber and fat in the avocado healthy and the protein fat. in the turkey. Healthy fat. Fat helps us burn fat when it's the right fat. And then when you get to the party, you're in control. Now the big thing is wear a waistband. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wear a waistband, don't wear a muumu, and don't wear the, I know how the guys cheat, they wear the jeans so they can loosen the belts with the big shirt over it. Like, especially those big, <sighs> those big, like, Tommy Bahama shirts that yeah. they think if they wear a big one over it, no one sees. We see. So just so you know. But gals, too, don't go wearing those sheath dresses I with no waistline. I have a confession to make, and anyone who knows me personally will. Oh, boy. I, 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 like, every time I go out to eat, I end up loosening my belt. Oh, and no. Actually we should have a lock. It off. There should be a lock on that belt. We should have a locking belt. What a great new product idea. We'll do a locking belt. Ooh. And if you start to stretch it too much, your alarm would sound, and, like, a big red light would go off. It's connected you to know? your iPhone. <laughs> it would be so awesome. It would eye shock belt. you. It would the shock eye you. belt. <laughs> you got to get that to the Pavlock guys. <laughs> so you do not loosen your belt. Can we agree right now that you were going to go through the holidays without loosening your belt? Yes. That this is uh, this is something we never do again. We do not go to, out to dinner and loosen okay. our belt. Will you come back and re-measure me like <laughs> when I'm better? 
Yeah, well, I want to see. I want to see you every week. You'd be posting this on Facebook, going, "Here's what's going on here," so okay. that everybody is watching. Everybody's watching, and they'll be cheering for you. And you know what? You'll motivate other people to do the same. You are now a role model. Well, uh, that's part of the. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm the guinea pig. Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah. So you're not going to go to that party hungry. You're going to wear a waistband. You're not loosening your belt ever. You're going to make sure that if you drink that you're choosing drinks that are not going to set you up to fail like eggnog that has so <laughs> many calories it's crazy but that you're also not drinking on an empty stomach don't go in and have te tequila shots and think you're going to go f be fine go in first and have a glass of water mm. because that can gosh you know what they did with dieters is they gave them a glass of water before bed to shut down 100 percent of their their hunger pangs so 100 percent of the people in the study shut down their hunger pangs so make sure you're doing your water. If you're mm -hmm. having a drink, alternate the drink with water. Eight glasses a day? Is that still the you thing? You know, or? it's like it, you could get very scientific here. I actually have a whole water schedule and all that. But bottom line is most people aren't drinking too much water. They're not drinking enough. By the time you're thirsty, you're way over. And there's so, apps that track how much water. Yeah, so just like they'll track how much you're eating and they'll track your, your weight, right? Yes, but do you recommend writing as opposed yes, to do. an app? Yes, I do. I do because I think physically, I don't, uh, the biggest thing is to just make sure you're actually recording it. But I really like the, the, actual movement of connecting the pen to the paper I think it's hugely helpful um, but basically think of like at least two if you're having a drink do two glasses of water because that's going to slow you down tremendously and if you start to feel like you're going to lose it get out of the situation go in the bathroom and have a bathroom chat with yourself now I tell women to carry a clutch purse and hold their glass of water because when the appetizers go by you can't lose your mind you can just hold your phone so you have no free hands okay. I mean can you can't a, face plant can we pretend like we're doing a bathroom chat we can. So well, I would be the mirror. Oh, it's the I mirror. I would be the mirror, and okay. you would be going, Stephen. Steve, um, <laughs> do not eat that piece of chocolate cake. Stephen, I'm a good person. I'm great the way I am right now. I'm just going to continue to get better and better and better. I'm going to take amazing care of myself because I'm a great person with so much to do out there in the world, and I don't want my health holding me back. And doggone it. I'm worth it, <laughs> and I like myself. <laughs> so there you is, go. So I can actually go, just take a break and go in and just sort of disconnect from yes. the party and just say, "Look, dude, if you're what in are there you too eating? long, people will think you're weird. So don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I find with so many people, why are they not doing this? Because, again, especially for women, we have so much body shame, and the number one thing I see holding us back is our health. And a lot of it comes from just this feeling of, like, I'm not good enough or, or you know, I'm overweight, so I'm not attractive. And you know what? You're great right now, and now we're just getting better. Yeah, I think part of, and give me your JJ expertise on this. When I was a little kid, mm -hmm. I was so skinny that it was, like, it was crazy. So I would drink weight gain shakes to try mm -hmm. to just put on fat. I was like a stick. And I think that sort of like has come into my... Okay, you ready? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Snap out of it. <laughs> it's over with. It's done. You don't have to think that way anymore. Now, I'm going to give you a little strategy for the party. So you're there and they're going to serve like chocolate cake. And this is your favorite, favorite, favorite thing. Yes, it so is. So what actually. you do, it is. Yeah. It is. I wish we had a fork, but you could use your fingers. But you would do what I call the three bite rule. If it's not a trigger food for you, if it's trigger food, don't even touch it. Yeah. Right. But if it's something you could have a couple bites and be done with, what you do is you take your bites out, and before you get into it, you're going to do this. I'm pepper. putting pepper all you're over it. You're putting pepper all over because the, my cake. Right. Well, it's not your cake. But my it's technically my cake. <laughs> so <laughs> you did bring the cake. So. But this is, you're not going to eat this, right? I've been known to. Are you one of those people that goes into the um, trash after food? You are, no, aren't you? Well, you're one of those. So we'd have I, to really like uh, I, 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 cover I'm it not, up. Uh, well, yeah, I wouldn't eat that. Yeah, that's good. got a lot of pepper. A lot of pepper. So that's what you do is you just make sure that it's not enough, as we know from the Seinfeld episodes, to just throw it in the trash. You have yeah. to really trash it. So pour coffee grounds on top of it, whatever you have to do. George went, in the, just, George uh, went into the yeah, trash. Yeah, and I sense that you could be George. Now, uh, there's also some simple little swaps that you can do. Put the pepper <laughs> on the cake. You've got to put the pepper on the cake. If you don't put the pepper on the cake, you could maybe eat the cake. Yeah, and not sea salt. Cause sea salt actually could be kind of yummy on that. So that's why I didn't bring salt. Yeah, that was smart. Yeah, thank you. Um, now, I know that in the book uh, you talk a lot about taking some food that you're used to and shifting it yes. and making like a healthy version yes the the a healthy version of the food how do you 
how does one go about doing that? I mean, how do you say like, well, so okay, I want a healthy protein bar. I want yeah, because so many of those protein bars are sugar. I'll just give you a real example of, because there's a reason I brought this cauliflower. Yes. It's like, why is this on the table, on the potato? Um, in fact, I had this last night at True Foods. We went out to dinner, and they had mashed cauliflower instead of mashed potatoes. So you could take a potato and mash it up, or you could take a cauliflower and mash it up, and it tastes amazing. So I always look for little swaps like that. Like if you're doing a wheat tortilla, they have coconut tortillas, or you could do a lettuce wrap. If you're doing pasta, gluten pasta, you can use spaghetti squash. We talked earlier about milk. If you're doing milk, you could do coconut milk. If you're doing cheese, you can do almond cheese. We use almond cheese all the time at home. Mm. So these are simple swaps, and what's so important about them is, is it's not saying, hey, if you're eating a donut, let's have some kale chips. I mean, that's not reality, <laughs> right? But it's not taking people too far away. And generally, once you start to eat that new food, people tell me they like it better. Mm. So they're very easy to do, and they're really great to do with kids. Because right now you said you mentioned that your kids were eating chicken nuggets, and I was going to about fall off my chair. Because I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're not driving to the store and using their money to get the chicken nuggets, right? No, so dino nuggets to be exact. Um, but what we'll do is we'll have some healthy nuggets and then some, you're right, you're right. I'm Did that make any sense? Honey, we were help. Saying, honey. But you could get <laughs> honey, coconut, help. you could get coconut flour or almond flour and you can get chicken and you can make your own nuggets and you can bake them or you could just actually do chicken. Yeah, huh. grilled chicken. Just, you could just give them grilled chicken. So there's that idea, too. Because remember, <laughs> exposure equals preference. So you've got to teach them. This is I your like time that. to set your kids up for success for life. So if you mm. teach them that, that, you know, look at the kids' meals at the um, restaurants. It's like we hate our kids. Yeah. I mean, look at that. There's oh, nothing oh, yeah. healthy there. Chicken nuggets. Chicken corn nuggets, dogs. pizza, macaroni and cheese, corn dogs. It's, just, it's, it's a ridiculous. Oh, Lord. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I know. JJ. A lot of work to be done, Dr. Steven. Yes, mm -hmm. totally. And well, as a medical professional, you are the role model. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm going to take it on. Okay. I'm definitely going to take Good. it That's on. That's what I was looking for, is the commitment. Yes. I, I have a long way to go. 26% is my body You know what? Fat. You just do these by changing one thing at a time. Little hinges swing big doors. So again, you start with something. You decide one thing that you're going to take advantage of, like starting the day with a meal replacement shake or if you're doing milk chocolate, switching over to dark chocolate. Right? You just, just, one simple thing. You were talking about milk that was making me crazy at the beginning of the show. I was like yeah. ready to pounce on you over there. <laughs> you know, just switch the milk to coconut milk, unsweetened of course. So it's just those little things and then get one habit and then you move to the next. They're little 1% shifts. You do that over the year, mm -hmm. you know, it's not gonna take that long to get to a 180 degree change. Let's give the viewers, let's give you guys some one percent shifts that we can leave them. We've got okay. we've got a few minutes, and I want right, to give them great. some actionable one percent shifts that they can take on today. Today, like me, I'm going to do it. Let's all do it together using JJ as our guide. And what's great is you can do these, and then they can model you. So the first thing, a simple one, we talked about it, is water, and this is one of the most crazy little ones because drinking water throughout the day can boost your metabolism as much as 30 percent each time that you do it. You can burn 300 more calories just by drinking water. I mean, what a silly not thing. Not caffeine. So not caffeine, straight water, although I do green iced tea throughout the day because that's another amazing one. Starting the day with a meal replacement shake, a protein shake, not whey, I do either pea or defatted beef with coconut milk and fiber. Increasing your fiber over the course of a of week. Get your fiber up to 50 grams a day. That can be things like avocados, raspberries, lentils, nuts and seeds, because that's going to help you be more satiated, but it's also going to feed the good bacteria in your gut, which can help you burn more fat and tolerate sugar better. Don't yeah. drink your sugar. So anything that you're drinking, fruit juice, switch it over to water with a little squeeze of lemon. That's one of the biggest ones where we get in trouble is if you're doing those green drinks that have a bunch of fruit in them, right. get rid of those. So no yeah. drinking of the sugar. So whatever you're doing every day, it's the things you do every day that make the big difference. So if you're having a coffee every day with milk in it, switch it to unsweetened coconut milk and get rid of the sugar. Use a little stevia or erythritol or xylitol. Stevia. Dr. Stevia. Dr. Steve. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I want to give one big yeah, one big stevia to doc to doctor, <laughs> doctor Virgin, JJ Virgin. You you are like a doctor to me. You're you're now my personal oh. doctor because I, I really love you and I want everybody to read the Virgin Diet 
Um, it's an amazing book. It's a great stocking stuffer. And JJ, I can't thank you enough for being here today and giving us all amazing 1% shifts. I think I have, I think I've got a chance now. I think I've got a chance. You do if you take it. Ladies and gentlemen, JJ Virgin. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next week on the Dr. Steven Show. It's the site where understanding investing starts to click. Click on wealthed.com, educating you about financial planning and answering your most important questions with live interactive shows hosted by experienced financial strategists and an on-demand library of videos and articles you can access anytime for free. Wealthed.com brings you retirement planning guidance, social security strategies, tax management techniques, portfolio allocation options, and more. Your source for information and financial education. Online, on demand, on wealthed.com.